uh, with the Fukushima Oversight uh, Committee to exchange opinions uh, of where we are standing uh, with the science. So I'm very thankful, first of all, to the Ministry of the Environment for uh, supporting us, uh, for having uh, this uh, uh, meeting here uh, in Fukushima. Uh, I'm also thankful for the Fukushima Prefecture that is also supporting this afternoon session. I'm very thankful to the Nuclear Safety Radiation Association that uh, has done all the practical arrangements uh, uh, for this meeting. And of course, I'm very thankful uh, to, to all the experts from our expert group. And I can tell you that the entire expert group uh, actually managed to come uh, for this uh, site visit. And uh, you have the attendance list and you see it's a broad expertise reaching from radiation uh, research, radiation dosimetry, radiation epidemiology, people having experience with previous nuclear accidents, but also people dealing with screening in general, and uh, of course clinicians and researchers working on thyroid cancer, the management of thyroid cancer in general. With this broad expertise, we hope to develop uh, very clear recommendations uh, in the future. So as already said, uh, the plan is that, that we have prepared uh, four uh, short presentations that again are not dealing with the Fukushima accident specifically, but are rather broad, also feeding into our recommendations, uh, dealing with uh, uh, framework policy on cancer screening in general, that this is not only specific to thyroid cancer, but really uh, with the aim to reduce cancer mortality, uh, how uh, uh, harms and benefits of screening can be defined. We have uh, a presentation on thyroid cancer in general, the molecular uh, pathology and uh, natural history, and uh, we have uh, uh, two presentations uh, dealing uh, uh, with uh, patients diagnosed with thyroid cancer and uh, their treatment, follow-up, and uh, surveillance. And uh, uh, we really appreciate that this is a public meeting because I think uh, this is beneficial that, that uh, everybody can listen to the discussions among the scientists and uh, uh, also for the transparency of the discussion. Nevertheless, I have to warn you a little bit that this still will be scientific presentations uh, for the sake of also informing each other with the Fukushima Oversight Committee. And I'm also very thankful for you to give us the opportunity to discuss with you. And uh, in this, I wish all of us a very successful time.それほどの多くの人が亡くなるわけではありません。で、そうするとその甲状腺癌っていう独特の問題とそれと癌の検診、癌のスクリーニングという独特の問題、あの専門家の間でも大きく意見が分かれるような問題が二つこれ重なっ
つまり、えー、見つかったからっていってもうすぐさま手術をしないといけないとかそういうことではないのでただ患者さんは非常に心配です、えー、甲状腺がんがんだなんて言われてでもしばらくほっておきましょうとか見てましょうって言われると大丈夫なのかなと思うわけですねでそこをどう対応していくべきなのかっていうようなことが中心に話し合われたわけですけれどもあのいろいろなあ試みがなされてるんだなっていうことが分かったのは非常に良かったと思います。でえーまあ、非常に有意義でした、一言で言って、非常にいい有意義な会議でした、でえー、そこで、えー、福島の特殊な問題、つまり放射線がということと、県民の不安が非常に強かった、まあ、今でも強い方がたくさんいらっしゃいますで、そういうところのもう一段、問題が難しいんですけれども、そこに関しては、まあ、いろいろ議論しましたけれども、えー、IARC の専門家も。意見があるわけではないわけですね。あのそれは難しい問題で、彼らはむしろそれをまあ、どう日本がどうなるかを知りたいというような感じであったというふうに、これはもう私の個人的なあの感想ですけれども、そういうスタンスだったなというふうに思いました。はい、えっ、ー、と以上でよろしいでしょうか。<笑>すみませんちょっとご質問の方はお時間の方は。はい。The purpose for, for the meeting from our side is uh, what I explained in what the purpose of our project is. So our project is forward-looking. Uh, we want to um, improve the preparedness in case of future nuclear accidents and uh, uh, thyroid cancer is one of the well-documented possible outcomes after a nuclear accident. And we feel now with the experience that has been made in Fukushima, also in Chernobyl, we can give proactively recommendations how countries can prepare themselves better for these situations by taking countermeasures, perhaps even before any accident happens, compared to having to react after the accident. So uh, the agency was also part of the Shamisen project, uh, as well as the World Health Organization. So the goal of this project is more an in-depth it's a kind of continuation, more in-depth uh, uh, evidence uh, interpretation of one very specific question. The Shamisen project was much broader. Mm -hmm. So we are looking more specifically really at thyroid examinations, uh, but uh, uh, there's an overlap both in the experts and uh, uh, also in, uh, in the scope of the project. Uh, but this one is really uh, targeted at being very detailed on what we recommend for the thyroid examination, embedded in the overall preparedness uh, for a nuclear accident. <laughs> One further comment. So as you have seen from our expert group, uh, a lot of them are clinicians, uh, pediatricians. So we add also very specifically the patient perspective and the perspective of the professionals dealing with the patients, which is uh, uh, an important extension of understanding. Uh, well, we are still in the progress of uh, looking at the evidence more specifically and, as I said, also taking the clinical perspective more as a focus. So it can be that our recommendations will be very similar to what uh, Shamisen recommended, but then based on uh, overall broader evidence assessment, so it strengthens the recommendations of Shamisen, but it can be also that perhaps in some of the aspects we would deviate a little bit. But this is really depending on the evaluation and at the middle, at the moment we are in the middle of this process. It's, I, I really don't want to predict the outcome at uh, this stage. And uh, I must really say that the visit uh, here in Fukushima and, uh, and uh, seeing the site is, 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 is key to our evaluation because mm -hmm. the only experience of mass screening after an accident is coming here from Fukushima and it's, it's, it's many aspects. I mean, we are, we are dealing with humans that are really anxious after an accident, which is entirely understandable. And, 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 and also we want to be in charge of, uh, of medical decisions that people make based on the evidence. Mm -hmm. So screening yes or not may maybe not be even a yes or no question. There, there can be something in between that perhaps you, you, offer, you offer something for, for, for people that are particularly concerned, you offer educational programs, 
so, so there's a lot of variety. And at the moment, I, I, I really don't want to predict the outcome because we're just in the middle yeah. of, uh, of this process. Yeah. Hmm. I mean, uh, clearly our project will not be an evaluation of the ongoing Fukushima program. Because for this, we would have put together probably also a different expert group with more radiation specialists than, 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 than the one that we have done. So, so really the scope is using the Fukushima experiments for making forward-looking recommendations and by adding a lot of the clinical perspective, also to make sure that people seeking help get the necessary qualified medical assistance and mm. that this is in place of, of, uh, of, of such an accident. So clearly our, our, our report will not include any recommendation of how to continue the screening in Fukushima. This is, this is not the scope of this project. For this, there's also the respective uh, uh, radiation communities, uh, uh, UNSCARE, for instance, ICRP. So our scope is really forward-looking, try to collect all the evidence in case of another accident that hopefully never happens. <laughs> but if it happens, be better prepared in a way and for this using all the evidence we have. Mm -hmm. And uh, I, I totally agree with you. Uh, uh, we have much less uh, uh, direct data on children that we do have for the adults, and, mm -hmm. and that's a limitation. Yeah. Right. Mm -hmm. I mean, there's clearly the distinction we have to make, which I said earlier, that between the cancer screening intended to reduce the cancer mortality in the general population compared to that here you're doing a, the thyroid monitoring because it might be that due to the accident you would have an excess of thyroid cancer if doses were high enough. So, so, so that's clearly a distinction in the topic. However, if you start implementing a mass screening, many of the benefits and the harms apply, of course, in the same way. But, I mean, I'm pretty sure that you would not have started any uh, uh, mass screening or thyroid cancer in the Fukushima prefecture if there had not been the accident. So, so, so in a way, this is also not a question that, that we can ask ourselves, because it's not a kind of voluntary decision. The accident has happened, and then you have to react. And the question is, is a mass screening an appropriate reaction due to this accident, or is it not? And mm -hmm. that is really the question that we try to evaluate uh, uh, in this uh, uh, project. But uh, as said earlier, we are in the middle of, uh, of, uh, of collecting the data, and uh, the answer you will hopefully have in April. So it's um, not only the evidence from the nuclear accident. So as you have seen, we have, uh, uh, we have people involved in the aftermath of the Chernobyl accident uh, in our group. Uh, now we have this uh, site visit in Fukushima because this is one of the richest uh, uh, databases we have so far. But, but this is also why we included the pediatric oncologists and, and uh, thyroid cancer experts to add the experience that you have on thyroid cancer screening outside any nuclear accident. And I think the, the example of South Korea is uh, in a way, even when it's adults and not children, uh, is also valuable data that, that, uh, that mm -hmm. has to play a role. Also the developments uh, mm -hmm. that you see in the US, uh, so how do you deal with the patients, the question of active surveillance compared to treatment. So we, we, we really try to collect all available sources for the evaluation mm -hmm. of, uh, of uh, uh, a recommendation. And we also want to put these recommendations in a wider context of uh, overall preparedness for nuclear accidents. I mean, there's also the question of the uh, uh, thyroid blocking with iodine, that, that uh, mm -hmm. the respective medication is available. Can you be proactive by, for instance, even educating the population before any accident happens? So these are all kind of questions that we also like to address in our report.